Welcome back to The Average Fisherman. So today's show is going to be comp something completely unique that I've never seen anybody else do on YouTube. Um, most of you may not know, but I am a nurse and have been for 20 years, so some of you are aware of that. Um, so I have a unique perspective and some authority to speak on this subject, so I figured since nobody else has ever touched on this, I would. This is going to be dealing with the health and safety aspects of fishing, something that goes severely neglected in, in my opinion. So we're going to jump right into that. First and foremost, something that really irks me as a kayak fisherman is when I watch other kayak fisher, fishing channels on YouTube and I see them not wearing one of these, a life jacket. Okay, this is the one that I actually wear. It's from Bass Pro Shops. And by the way, none of this stuff is sponsored. This is just strictly stuff that I wear and use because I have found it to work. So this is the Bass Pro Shops PFD that I wear when I'm in a kayak. Truth of the matter is, is if the water goes anywhere past your waist, you should be wearing a PFD. Anything other than like two to three feet of water you, you're very able to drown in, especially if you fall out, you hit your head on the way down. Nobody, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless in a kayak of things that can go wrong and you can get dumped and easily knock yourself out or something like that. Wear a PFD, people. Wear a PFD. This one has lots of pockets to store everything that I need quick access to. I keep my pocket knives, my cell phone, you know, everything. Uh, it's the, it has a lot of pockets on it. So this is the one that I actually use when I go in my kayak. And I do wear it the entire time that I'm in my kayak. Um, please, please, for your family's sake, um, do not get out on the water in a kayak without a PFD on. Um, every year here in Louisiana, there are new stories about them having to drag the bayous and stuff like that to recover the bodies of boaters that have been thrown overboard or fell overboard under, under some whatever circumstances they drowned. Don't make your families have to go through that. Please wear a PFD. Please. That's just common sense. Wear a PFD. Okay? Now we're going to run over to the thing that I think often gets overlooked, and that is sun protection. Um, I'm wearing this shirt today. I'm, of course, not affiliated with Hook or anything like that. Um, I wear their shirts because they're 50 SPF and they're long sleeve and they're made out of relatively thin breathable material. Um, I don't like having to spray sunblock all over me and go fishing. Um, it has a greasy feel, even the dry ones and stuff like that. But, but you do need sunblock or sun protection when you go fishing. Um, the, the prevalence of skin cancer and stuff like that amongst outdoorsmen is just ridiculous. Especially, often neglected, the backs of the hands because you're constantly, you know, picking up fish and dealing with stuff in the water and washing your hands off in the water and you're washing off that sunblock and stuff like that. It, it's, it's melanoma in the back of the hands is one of the most overlooked um, preventable, form, preventable skin cancers amongst fishermen, hands down, which is why I wear these. These are, again, hook gloves and they're actually pretty nice and they cover your hands and they're fingerless and they, you wear them like this. And it does provide sun protection to the majority of your hands and wrist while you're fishing, which is important. And I wear them specifically for sun protection. Um, speaking of which, I also have the gaiters. And it's for the same exact reason. This is sun protection for your face and neck. Okay? I do use sunblock. And I use Neutrogena Spray-On 100 SPF. The thing that you need to be most concerned about when looking for sunblocks is broad spectrum. Make sure it has those two words on it, broad spectrum, okay? Um, the way sunblocks work is they take the UV energy from the sun and they convert it to heat, okay? And it prevents it from doing cellular um, damage to your skin. It, the UV radiation from the sun is something called ionizing radiation, so it does damage your DNA. <laughs> Obviously, that's something you don't want. So you either need to cover up or wear a good broad spectrum sunblock. The next thing that a lot of people don't think about often are your eyes. A lot of people wear sunglasses, polarized sunglasses, but you also need UV blocking sunglasses. Um, these are as cheap as it gets. I bought these at Walmart. These are Ozark Trail. Um, they're polarized and UVA and UVB blocking, and that is what you want when you go out on the water. If you're going to be out in the sun for long periods of time, and you, you got to protect your eyes. Cataracts and stuff like that have been shown to be um, um, 
exacerbated by excessive UV radiation, so you really should be protecting your eyes when you're out on the water. Which brings me to my next subject, water. There is a such thing as water intoxication now. Depending on how strenuous of activity you're, you're going, this is more for the kayakers who do it like me in the dead of the summertime and you're out on the water for six, eight hours and stuff like that, you're sweating profusely. Water probably is not gonna be your best bet. You're gonna want a sports drink or something with some electrolytes in it at that point to prevent muscle cramping and diluting your, your body's electrolytes. If you're just gonna be out fishing for a couple hours and it's a pretty mild day or something like that, you can get along with some water, but make sure you have a method and a way of storing and getting to some cool, fresh water. Um, things like that are just gonna make, make it so much easier for your recovery the next day. You're not gonna worry, have to worry about a heat stroke or heat exhaustion or anything like that. It's just, just plan ahead. Plan ahead is basically all, all I'm saying. The last point that I wanna make, and I often neglect this myself, I built a rack for the back of my kayak out of some PVC pipe in order to attach a adjustable umbrella. So if all else fails, find some shade, recover, call for help, and get yourself in and off of the water. If you start feeling anything like dizziness or lightheadedness, if you're, 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 your face feels flushed but you're no longer sweating or anything like that, you really need to seek medical attention right away. Um, heat stroke is no joke. It's a medical emergency. Um, it's a legit medical emergency. It's in dial 911 kind of medical emergency. Heat exhaustion, on the other hand, is, is just what it says. You're out in the heat, you're sweating profusely, you're just starting to feel run down, but you're still sweating. Um, that's the time to take action. Get into some shade, drink some fluids, cool off, and you should probably call it a day. Um, I know I've been particularly bad about that. Um, last year I had an incident where I nearly passed out trying to get my kayak up a ramp and back onto the car because frankly, I was catching a hell of a lot of fish and I ignored the symptoms because I just wasn't paying attention. And it wasn't until I got back in the car that I realized, oh damn, I'm in trouble here. Um, and, and at that point, it's almost too late. So I was able to, to get myself some help and everything turned out fine in the end, but it was not a nice situation. So again, just to recap, sun protection. Protect yourself from the sun. A good sun hat, I don't wear this when I'm fishing. I wear a wide brim sun hat. Um, you know, get some UV protectant clothing. Don't forget your hands. Wear some gloves that protect the back of your hands. UV protection for your eyes and the sunblock you do wear needs to be broad spectrum. And for God's sake, wear a PFD. Go get some fish. Come home safe to your family, people. Don't make them have to be on the receiving end of that phone call. Don't. Wear a PFD, please. And next time, we're gonna go over some, actually, hopefully, I'm gonna make a kayak trip earlier next week, and I will be back with some good fishing footage. Tight lines, my friends.